I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who wanna share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and as usual, we appreciate you watching, and I hope something that is said today will touch your heart. Uh, it's interesting how God continues to work in different people and at different times, and, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the story that we have today with Brent Smart. I appreciate you coming down from Idaho yes. and sharing your story and your journey. Yes, I'm glad <laughs> to be here. <laughs> well, uh, you were born in Idaho, I understand. I was born in Idaho. You were born and raised? I, mean, I was you're... born and raised in the same place that I'm living now. Is that right? There in... <laughs> yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah. that my, uh, uh, I think the house I'm living in now is one I was raised in. Oh, my goodness. That's... Boy, that's rare, yeah. isn't it? Maybe yes. not for Idaho. I don't know. Yeah. Was it so, on a farm? I thought it's, uh, it's, Sort of a form. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we, there was more acres to it now. We we ended up with about four acres. A lot of LDS up there, I yeah. assume, right? Uh, most of them. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Your folks were they LDS? Yeah, they were LDS. They were. My mother was wanted to be a lot more active than my dad did. Yeah, that happens and, uh, sometimes, doesn't but it? But he, he went enough to get us to church. <laughs> pretty on, regular. Pretty day. regular. Yeah. You know and. Uh, and were you active then? You were baptized at eight, were you? I was, I was baptized when I was eight. Yeah. And I... Went to primary and well, Sunday school? Oh, yeah. And... I, there was quite a few years I made 100% primary. Were you? Really? I had to walk home from school, you know, and... Yeah. Well, oh, that's I, right. It was in the afternoon yeah, there for yeah, a while, wasn't it? Or yeah. For, for many it, uh, years. I walked home from school on primary days. I rode, rode the bus on the other days. I see. And the church house that was our ward meeting house was uh, right on the way. Yeah, okay. And, and I went to primary mostly because that's where all the kids went. Well, sure. I mean, that's and, what you yeah, did. And yeah, that's, that's what I did on that, Wednesday afternoon. So, yeah, yeah. That was our Tuesday afternoon was there. Was it for you? Okay. Uh, and then you went into Sunday school, I guess. And yeah, did I, you get all the priesthood? Yeah, Were I you a deacon and teacher? Went to and... Sunday school quite a bit because all the kids I knew and that was there. Yeah. And Just... you know, really, I graduated from high school. I don't think there was a anybody but a Mormon in that. Really, in the whole in the, the whole, whole school, school was Mormon. Yeah. So. Now, did you take seminary? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah, I graduated from seminary. Yeah. And, uh, you feel like you had a testimony of the church uh, as you I, think not, back? Not really. I don't know if I've ever had a real testimony of the church, but you went. I, but you, I, I went. You know, and uh, that Mormonism entered my body, kind of like the osmosis. You know, yeah, it, is, you, it was just, it just there. You know, <laughs> the, the, it was strong over here, and you know, and just kept going through the. Yeah. You know, soaking in, soaking in. Uh, and I, boy, I didn't know anything else. Yeah. Because. Well, yeah, because. The, uh, everybody else went there. Yeah. So all the cars came. I thought, boy, it must be right. Look at all the sure. people here. Just assume. I mean, that's what family and everything <laughs> yeah. else. So. Yeah. So you end up getting married uh, to, yes. to your wife of yep. now 52 well, after, years, right? After 
school after high school. Yeah. Uh, kind of flew off of the handle. Oh, did you? Yeah. I was, you mean away I, from church? Uh, away from church, away yeah. from everything, you know. Really? A little bit of a rounder and, <laughs> and, and worked away from home a lot. Yeah. And... Did you feel freedom, or, or did oh, you yeah, feel I, a sense of I, I getting away it. from the house? And yeah, I loved it. Yeah, you know, and then, <clears throat> and but never it, questioned it, the church, right? I mean, you no, didn't, you didn't assumed the church was still true. And, didn't worry about the church, right? You know, but you know, I never questioned it. You right. know, it might must be because yeah, it's still there. You know, yeah. how long did that last? Well, it, there for a while, and then. And one weekend I come home, and there was a, my mother run a little greasy spoon cafe. Oh, yeah. And there's this cute little girl waiting tables there, you know. And, <laughs> and I, I kind of got... Was her name Ruth? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky guess, huh? Yeah. So, we'll get to meet her next week, I guess. So, but, uh... so we was... We was and, and she ended up living with my folks because of her her family, you know, her problems with her life. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we probably have to get all of that story from her. But, <laughs> yeah, we'll ask her. But that. being as she was at the house there when I come home on weekends, <laughs> yeah, we got we got to know each other really yeah. good. She yeah. was a lot younger than me, but yeah, but. I but thought that would be a difference, but I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Fell in love, huh? Oh, I, right away. Did you? You know, so. Yeah. And eventually, we got married. Yeah. And we had a, our first boy. Yeah. And then she started putting the pressure on me to, you know, we got to, if we're going to be an eternal family, we got to go to church. Uh. You know, okay. I, and you were I, willing to do that, I guess. I, I've been there before. Yeah, I can handle yeah, it. You can do that. Yeah. So, we we lived our life, raised raised our. We had three boys. Did you? Mm -hmm. And uh, now you do get sealed in the temple, right? Yeah, we were Was that in the Logan in the, Temple? We were sealed in the temple. We didn't. Yeah. We didn't get married in the temple. We right. just got sealed. Yeah. How was that experience? It was wild. Well, in you what know, way? <laughs> I. I didn't understand quite what they were doing to me, but yeah, and it it was totally different, you know. And then, then after we went with that time, when we went back for a few other visits, you know, yeah. you know, it, everything changed. I couldn't imagine. Oh, after 1990, you mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we. Yeah, was, they changed a few things, didn't yeah, they? So. Did that surprise you? Yeah, it did. You, it just, you figure if God's if, in charge, yeah, that yeah, things wouldn't yeah. change. Why would it change? It should be the same. Yeah. It should never change. <laughs> You'd think if God had put his stamp on it, it would have been yeah, right the first yeah, time. That's where it would be. Yeah. Yeah, and I then, thought the uh, same thing. I buried that. I didn't worry about it, but I know, thought about it. Yeah I, th yeah, I thought about it quite a bit, you know. Yeah. And <laughs> Did you ever sense the, or did you ever, were you ever aware of the influence of masonry in the temple? No, I didn't. You know, I was completely ignorant of that. Yeah, me too. I, you know, I had I no idea. I didn't didn't come into that till not too long ago. You know, when I started started so studying and studying, huh? You know, Joseph Smith's books. Yeah. Now, see, when we uh, when I was a kid, they folks had a a little Joseph Smith book. You know, his yeah. life history of yeah. Joseph Smith. Right. And then I then I got busy and read some of the stuff later, and I like it's. Uh, Sean Brody's book, No Man Knows My History. Yeah, yeah. And I said, man, this ain't the Joseph Smith that was in this book over here. You know, this yeah. guy, this guy's quite a rascal. So, now, yeah, you were active all this time with your wife and the three boys? Yeah, and you were, yeah pretty much active. Okay, and you've been married 52 years, Yeah, right? And, uh, so how long ago was it that you started kind of looking at things differently? Oh, it's been, it's not too long ago. It's only been a couple of years, right? It's only a few years ago, you know. Yeah. So what uh, actually happened? I mean, well, you were busy, I mean, you were a high priest. Yes, I'm and, a high priest. Yeah, and... and uh, uh, we've, 
I think one of the big things that hit me was I've run across an article where they had the DNA for the Indians <laughs> and Found Native that. America yeah. that just don't didn't 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 ring out. You're right. So started questioning maybe the Book so, of Mormon a little so bit. So I started questioning that then. Yeah. But you know, and I read the Book of Mormon. Yeah. And I've read it several times. Feel like you had a testimony well, of that and I just I don't know, but it, I read a lot of stuff, you know, and I just yeah. It seems like I just read the words, nothing soaks, yeah. nothing soaks in. Well, just as a, an aside, kind of, what did you think of Jesus at this point in your life? Well, I kind of liked him, you know. Back as a Mormon? Of the, he was your elder brother, yeah, right? Yeah, well, that's what they told me. Right. So, I, well, everybody thinks it, you know, must be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, and... Did you, did you ever, the Bible, what did that mean to I, you I, as a I, Mormon? I read the... I read the books that Cleon Skousen put out. That, Two thousand years the, yeah, and the three thousand. I read them and went through them pretty good, but that didn't yeah. get into the that didn't get into the New Testament that much. I no, got, it didn't. It just four thousand yeah, years yeah. was the last one, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I thought I had a pretty good handle on it. But yeah, well, you sound like you're I, a normal studier of I, Mormonism. I, yeah, I didn't really study Mormonism that much. I just lived yeah. it, oh, you yeah. know, because. Everybody else I knew lived it, and yeah. my wife lived it, and, yeah. and my family, and I had a brother that was a bishop in Neola, Utah. So, okay. So. So what actually happened then to make you again look at it differently? Well, I think you read the, you read Fon Brody's book. I think the killer started when my nephew's wife dropped off some books. They was cleaning out their stuff, you know, and dropped off the book there that was. Uh, and one of them was in uh, Sacred Loneliness. In Sacred Loneliness, yeah. You know, by right. Rushman. Right. Well, Todd Compton, I think, Todd wrote that. Todd Compton's one that and was. And then Rough Stone Rolling was, was Rushman. Rushman. Did you read that one, too? Yes, I did. And what did you think of those? I thought they was... I didn't. I thought they ratted on Joseph Smith pretty good. <laughs> They're supposed to be history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because... And you did? Did you believe it, or did you think oh, they I were believed, making I it up? I believed them. I, did you? I stood, that's uh, in sacred loneliness. Really, really started me thinking. Yeah. And then that's when I started reading these others. Yeah. And was it on. shocking? Yeah, it I was. Because we, we we well, they don't even talk. The Mormons don't even talk about that very no, much. No. But when they do talk about it, it's all. Like it was all happy and yeah. everybody was yeah. good with it. Emma oh, was fine yeah. and they oh, yeah. had a wonderful marriage and all and, that. Uh, when you find out that, uh, you know, you'd think that Emma would be his first wife that he married in the temple. Yeah. That she was the 25th wife. That was sealed to her. 25th to, to wife. <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't know about a lot of them, did she? She didn't know. Yeah. And they, when he had the Johnson girls in his house, he married one of them, and the other didn't know it. Yeah. And then he managed to marry the other, and the other didn't know it. Yeah. So you started. But, uh, he that was a kind of a sneaky deal, you know, because <laughs> if they, the Johnson, sold their farm in Canada. Yeah. When they converted to the church, then they come down there and Joseph took their money. Yeah. You know, went into the church fund, and. Uh, then the, the mother died, and then... Uh, the Johnson girl's mother died. Yeah. Mother died. So Brigham looked at them little teenage girls, and they said, you know, and then <laughs> promptly sent the dad on a mission yeah. and told him not to worry. They'll be right here in the house, and they'll, He'll we'll take, take care, care of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> he took care of them. <laughs> yeah, they took care of them. Uh. So... And you don't hear about that in seminary, right? No. No, no. That's, that's nothing to do with seminary. No, or, or even at Sunday school or, or anything. <laughs> so, <clears throat> anyway, then I started reading in No Man Knows My History. Yeah. And I thought, why didn't, she wrote it in 1945. I know, so why many did, years why ago. Why didn't I read that in 1950 and then I wouldn't have had to do all of this? <laughs> <laughs> no. The same thing. I didn't. I didn't read it until very recently. Yeah. But I guess and, it's just again and a narrow. And the statements in there. He says, you know, 
the book was actually, he actually wrote the Book of Mormon. And then, the, you know, I looked up the cover page one day here a little while back. Yeah. And it, don't say it was translated by Joseph Smith. It says authored Author. by Joseph Smith. Yeah. Uh, well, if he translated, why would he? Why would why he be the author? Yeah. So, <laughs> I th I think once I started having my eyes open a little bit, and it sounds like yeah. you too, you just started seeing things yeah. differently. Oh, no, it just yeah. really, really snowballed on me. And well, now did you share any of this with Ruth? Well, I didn't dare. No, I didn't either. You know, because, but you know, I found out that right about the time I had my. With, I was thinking about coming down that road, and yeah. well, well, she was in a Bible group with a bunch of non-denominational people, you know. She was Catholics and Protestants, you know. There's as LDS, yeah. as and, and, and she, I think she was the only LDS one in there. Wow! And she was doing Bible studies wow. with them. So that was at you the know, same time. Yeah. Well, you were telling me about a born again experience that you had. Would you yeah. care to share that with us? Well, that was uh, that was just. And there, was that recently? I mean, it's, no, that it was, was that was. I was still in Wyoming then. Okay. And that, that not too far from when I before I retired. It was in the late fifties. Oh, really? You know, and I coming down the road, and I. I, I, just about to the junction, and I was talking to myself, you know, about the church and Had religion. you read these books then? No. Oh, this was before that. Yeah, and, oh. uh, you know, and I, I knew there was a God because all I have to do is look at the mountains and the world, you know. <laughs> so, Seems like self-evident, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, so I was going along there, and all, just all of a sudden hit me. Just, it just, I, it wasn't... Almost, almost a shock. Yeah, <laughs> you know. What was it? And they just told just told me that it's wrong. The church. The church. Oh, it's, it's wrong. <laughs> and <laughs> you, you know. And you just knew at that the, point oh, that something yeah, was that something was wrong. Wow. And then, then I'd I'd go to I'd go, go to church a lot with the wife. You yeah. know, but working out of town and home on weekends and stuff. A lot of times, I just our church started in the morning, had the Sunday school and yeah. relief society and that. Sure. And, uh, and then I'd I'd get there for sacrament meeting. Yeah. So. So then. And you're learning more and more as you as you I'm, read. I'm starting to read more. I, I, and did you I'm, share any of this? You didn't. You say you didn't dare yeah, share it with her. Didn't dare really. Yeah. So anyway. So what finally happened? Finally happened. Well, we come, we came to, we came home. I retired. Yeah. And we moved back. To, we bought the farm from, the the part of the farm that had the house on it yeah. in the seventies. You know. Okay. You know, and then to take care of mother, she, my dad died early. Oh, so you're taking you know, care of mom. Yeah. Your mom. So nobody was taking care of her, and and, and she just uh, when my dad died. He was ten years older than her, and she just went back in the, went back in her room, sat down in the corner, and waited to die. Oh dear! And she was only fifty-two. Oh my goodness! And she lived, you know, quite a bit longer. Sure. But, but uh, then, then she just got Alzheimer's really bad and oh. started started, and nobody would take care of her. I had to, so you were you so, and Ruth took so, care of her. Huh? And we was we was in. Uh, we was in Green River, Wyoming at that time. Mm. Uh, that was just after I got out of school. Mm. And uh, and so she got to, she started going home on weekends and checking on checking on my mother. Yeah. And she finally got there and found out things were just so bad, you know, and yeah. and neighbors trying to get her put in taken out of the home and mm -hmm. So we decided to move back, you know, I quit my job. We moved back to take care of her because nobody else would take care of her. that was on the farm. Mm -hmm. I did want to ask you a little bit because I understand you raise or have sheep. Yes, I had a herd of sheep. Well, somebody once in my interviews talked to me about the difference between a shepherd and a sheep herder. Yeah. Could you talk yeah. to address that a little bit? Okay. Because yeah. I have a sense of what that means in terms of okay. Jesus. 
the the shepherd is like the savior. Yeah. Okay. And the sheep herder just takes care of the sheep. Just drives the sheep along. Just drives, you know. And if the Do the, the sheep know your voice? Oh, definitely. The 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 shepherd, if the wolves come, the he'll run away and scatter and the sheep will scatter. But the the shepherd they know his voice and they'll come to it. Is that right? And it, you, do they listen to your voice? Oh yeah, I uh, I went out one morning. The neighbor come was out, and, you know, come to the door and says, uh, "Is your sheep out?" And I, well, I don't know. You know, I hurried and went outside, you know, and looked at the signs on the gravel, on the yeah. driveway, and yeah. I, boy, I bet they are. Yeah. <laughs> so. You could tell. <laughs> it, yeah, I could tell. It was all over the yard. <laughs> so I uh, started looking around, and he he says, I'll run home and get my four-wheeler and see if we can round them up. And so he went over there, and I just grabbed the bucket and went out across the road. And they, they was a little over a block away across the four-lane highway, you know, in a little three-cornered piece of ground over there. And I got over there and banged on the bucket and hollered at them. And... I you. couldn't quite get, I just barely beat them into the pen. <laughs> they came running. They came running to your just, voice. They come running to my voice. Had you ever associated that with Jesus? Well, not till I've, not till I've read it in the book, you know. Yeah, I, I just think it's such a tremendous analogy. Mm -hmm. It struck me so much that he's the gatekeeper. I mean, he's the good shepherd. Yeah. And that we call, that we follow his mm -hmm. voice. Yeah. And he's not... A sheep herder, uh -huh. and I feel like that's the way Mormon religion yeah. is. Yeah. More, more hurting us along. You know, yeah. we're not yeah. listening to a but, voice. But you're not listening to the shepherd. Yeah. Yeah, I could call them from any place in the and they would come in the to pasture. You. But I had a big pasture, of three and a half acres. Yeah. And they could be clear in the bottom corner, and I could, I could call them. Now, if somebody else called, would they come? No. Now, how they, do they know your voice? They'd, Just they'd come you... to Ruth. They would, well, yeah, because yeah, that's a familiar voice. To me, you know. And I just think that's a tremendous I, lesson for us you know, in, and, in and who if, Jesus is and what he's, yeah, he's somebody, called to us. If somebody comes to look at him, you know, wanted to buy one or something, yeah. they'd have to stay clear out of sight, you know. Because they, they wouldn't even They come. wouldn't even get close to me if there was a stranger with me. If there was a stranger. Me. But they would hear your mm -hmm. voice and come to you. So... Oh, that's neat. Well, so t tell us a little bit about what you learned then. You started learning uh, more and more, and, well, and, just, the, and you had this sense that the church wasn't true, I guess? Yes, I did. And really, Was it shocking to you? Well, for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what the, once, this, once the ball bat hit me, you know, then it started, well, I started looking at a little closer. A little more and more you know, and more. Yeah. And uh, read the read the what the the National Geographic said about the Mormon religion. Yeah. They had a big letter that you can look up on the internet. Right. And the Smithsonian Institute has about, got a about big, the Book of Mormon. Big right? an, an analogy of the yeah. Book of Mormon. Yeah. And they both say it's it's total. It's just a, there's totally false. No you know? archaeology support. No, there's or absolutely anything. no archaeological yeah. or yeah. Linguistic support support to it, and the uh, and the DNA evidence is against it. Yeah, points right straight to Mongolia. Yeah, the Asian continent over yeah. there, rather and than Hebrew. I've got I've got grandkids because what my oldest boy married a, a Indian girl, mm -hmm. and they've got the blue mark on their butt that <laughs> the Mongolians have. Really? Yeah. Wow. So I've heard of that. Yeah. Well, so did you? What did your boys think of your journey? Have you talked to them? I guess about well, what you yeah. learned. Well, yeah, we've talked to both of them a little bit. One of them's, you know, he's he's not in a position where he wants to really Get into jump out of the church. Right. Yeah. But he's he's. He's almost. He's actually interested in knowing where we get some of this stuff. Oh, good. And uh, the other boy, he he served a mission in in uh, Indiana. Yeah. Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah. And I don't think he had a really good in missionary experience because. Uh -oh. Did he go inactive? 
No, active? he's still. Oh, he's just yeah, still he, active. He, he don't go to church a lot. He works out of town, and he was active quite a while. And, yeah. And they're marrying the temple and all of that. And but he he just I I mentioned it to him. He says absolutely, Joseph Smith is absolutely a prophet. Yeah. And I. <laughs> You know, not, you know, I'm not going to fight over we it. Keep, we keep praying about them for them, yeah. don't we? Yeah. That keep they'll come keep to hoping see. he'll come too. They just think you're, what do they think? That you've lost the spirit? That you've... Uh, I think he does. That you're a little yeah. daffy about yeah, the whole thing? Because, I know uh, that's what my kids think. My, la me. my last great-grandkid that they blessed down there, Yeah. I told him I couldn't stand in the circle. Right, yeah. You know, because... He didn't feel right about I, that. So I, I would... I've been lied to so much. I don't want to. I don't want to lie to anybody else. Well, and I, I think that's one of the things that got me a lot was being a hypocrite yeah. about what I know and what, what people were talking and, and what I believed all these years. And you know, we ended up with the, some little black books. You know, that one with Dennis and the, Dennis and Rowney Higley. Higley, yeah. Wrote Higley. that little black book. Yeah. I, have you seen that? I think I have, yes. Yeah, it's got a, it, it breaks down, it goes right through it and tells you what's the matter with the Book of Mormon. Yeah. You know, now there's like five places in the Book of Mormon that it says that man will only have one wife. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. against polygamy. Yeah. Yeah. And then and in the 101st section of the Doctrine and Covenant, it says man will only have one wife. Yeah, in the old yeah, old section till, 101. Till Joseph Smith got caught in the barn with that Annie <laughs> Alger, and then he had to. Then Hiram Smith told him, "You can solve this. You know, all you got to do is have a revelation." Go. <laughs> <laughs> and take care of everything. Huh? Take care. How of everything. convenient, huh? Well, so, we've got just a minute or so left. Uh, what would you say to your family or friends that might be listening to this? Well, or to Mormons that may be. I think uh, Martin Luther King sums it up really good in his little statement there. What did he say? It says, uh, you'll, in the end, you'll never, you will not remember the words of your enemies, but the silence of your friends. Oh. Uh, so. Yeah. If Some they, friends do go silent when you they when you go leave real the silent. Yeah. So. Well, Brent, thanks so much for sharing your story. And well, now we we love Jesus and the Bible, well, and I'm, it's wonderful, isn't I'm it? I'm starting to read the Bible more, and it's starting to get Good. a lot more. Well, thanks, Brent. <laughs> we'll see you next time on the Ex Mormon Files. <laughs>